and this video, I'll show you how to use a free online map editor and take the image into Photoshop to create a visually enhanced architectural mapping diagram. The first tool we'll use is Mapbox. It offers a pay-as-you-go plan, but for student-level work, the free tier is usually more than enough. With Mapbox Studio, you can customize nearly every visual element on the map, from roads and buildings to water and green spaces, by adjusting the colors, styles, and labels directly in the browser. Basically, you can design a polished, professional-looking map without even opening Photoshop. It simplifies the mapping process significantly. In our last video, we covered how to extract maps from OpenStreetMap and edit them in Adobe Illustrator. With Mapbox, that process becomes even easier and faster. Mapbox is known for its versatility and is used across industries like urban planning, logistics, real estate, and mobile applications. For architectural mapping, I'll walk you through how to customize a map step by step. First, go to Mapbox, log in, and head over to your account. All your mapping templates and data will be stored here. To start a new map, click Style Editor and create a new style. You can either start from scratch with a blank canvas or choose from pre built map templates. Select the template that best matches your desired style or color theme. Monochrome is one of my go-to themes because it's super simple and I can easily tweak the layers by adjusting minor colors. The outdoors theme is great too, especially for sites with noticeable elevation changes since it includes clear contour lines. Satellite is another solid option. It's clean, well-balanced, and offers better color contrast compared to Google Maps. Here, I'm choosing a dark monochrome theme and clicking Continue. I'll use the same site as before in Boston from OpenStreetMap. For this map, I'm focusing on highlighting the green spaces and water systems in Boston, inspired by the emerald necklace designed by landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted. To change the color of any property layer, simply click on it in the map and select the layer you want to edit, like water for example, then adjust the color to your preference. Next, I'll change the landscape color. Left click on the landscape layer in the map, select it and adjust the color. I like to zoom out to check if the colors still work at different scales. Mapbox is great for creating a series of mapping diagrams because it keeps the color theme consistent across all scales. I'll also change the road network color to match the overall theme. Mapbox even allows users to adjust layer colors based on the zoom range, so you can choose which layers appear or change at different zoom levels. Normally, we avoid having text on the map, so to hide it, just click on any text area, find its corresponding layer, and click Hide Component. Since the text belongs to different layers, you'll need to hide each one individually. This keeps the map clean and focused on the main features. I adjusted the colors of the main roads and water a bit to better fit the overall style. Once all the design settings are finalized, I'll publish the map so I can save it as a template for my next project. This way, I can maintain consistency across different mapping diagrams. Next, I'll export the current view as a PNG image. To do this, click Print on the top menu and adjust the image size as needed. Unlike OpenStreetMap, Mapbox doesn't allow exporting SVG files with editable layers, so we have to finalize all the layer colors and settings here before exporting. I'll darken the blue for the water body to reduce its brightness, then save the adjusted map as a PNG again. Now I'll create a mapping diagram similar to what we previously made using OpenStreetMap and Illustrator. Let's see how this version turns out. I'll work on layering and styling to match the previous diagram's look. 
that color adjustment sounds like a great way to make the map more readable and visually balanced. Shifting the land to white, roads to gray, and landscape to lighter green will give a softer, more approachable look. Lightening the water to a pale blue and darkening the buildings to gray should create good contrast for emphasizing key elements like site context and built structures. Once you've zoomed in and applied these changes, the mapping diagram will have a clean and clear aesthetic that's perfect for analysis. After all the adjustments, we'll have a solid series of base maps. From here, you can add text, arrows, or markers to highlight specific areas. If you're looking for a completely free map editor, you'll want to check out the next two online tools. While it has fewer features than Mapbox, it's more than enough for creating personalized base maps. Click Explore Styles in the top menu, and you'll see tons of pre-made maps contributed by others. Find one you like, then click it to start editing. The website's interface is super straightforward. You can see the map code right away and edit it directly to customize the map. You can also download the map image, adjust the aspect ratio, and choose the resolution. You can find the full step-by-step -step editing process in our Mastering Mapping, Techniques for Architectural Site Analysis course, where we guide you through every stage, from extracting map data to creating professional-level visual mapping diagrams. This lecture covers the entire workflow, from extracting data from open map sources to transforming it into visual mapping diagrams. In this session, you'll learn the fundamentals of mapping, what it is, how to extract the necessary layers from various free and open sources, and how to create different styles of mapping diagrams to enhance your site analysis. Export the view again. This way, we will have one colored map and one aerial photo, both in the same scale and size. Drag both images into Photoshop and ensure the canvas is cropped to the same size. Then, rasterize both layers to prepare them for further editing. Just like we did with OpenStreetMap in Illustrator, the first step here is to separate the layers for easier color editing later on. I recommend organizing elements like water, roads, land, and green spaces into separate layers. This gives you more control over the visuals and helps maintain a clean workflow. Once the layers are separated, we can desaturate the aerial photo in the background. This makes sure the map elements pop and creates a stronger visual contrast for your final mapping diagram. Press Ctrl plus U to bring up the hue saturation panel and adjust the lightness of the water area set it to a light gray. Then double-click on the water layer icon to open layer style. Turn on stroke and set the outline to very thin, just one or two pixels. Adjust the opacity slightly to soften it, then click OK. Press Ctrl and U to open the hue and saturation adjustment, then desaturate the green layer. Adjust the lightness to make it a slightly darker gray than the land area, creating subtle contrast. Then, press C to activate the Crop tool and expand the canvas size, creating a white border around the drawing. This helps frame the image and gives it a clean, professional presentation. Adjust the composition, if needed, to keep the elements well-balanced within the new space. Move the title from the top right corner to the center for a more balanced composition. Then, change the font to a serif typeface to match the classic and refined style of this drawing. Adjust the font size and spacing to ensure readability while maintaining an elegant look. Now, let's refine the drawing by adding more details. 
First, I'm placing a north arrow and a legend at the bottom center to keep the layout balanced and clear. Next, I'll use the Shape tool to create a thin black border around the edge of the mapping, giving it a more polished look. Since Mapbox doesn't provide a built-in scale, I'll download a map from OpenStreetMap, take a screenshot of a similar area with a scale, and import it into the canvas. This will help establish a clear sense of scale, making it easier for the reader to understand the relative size of the mapped area. The evenly spaced lines also add a structured, clean aesthetic to the diagram. Due to the time limit of this YouTube video, I've skipped some parts of the process. But if you'd like to follow the full step-by-step -step workflow, you can find it all in my mapping course. Just click the link below. Once we have a clean layered map in Photoshop, it's super easy to switch up the visual style whether it's from a dark theme to a light blue tone, or even to a minimalistic look. Just adjust the colors and tweak a few elements on the map, and you're good to go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to drop a comment if you have any questions. I'd love to hear your thoughts or help out.